Today's lecture will be a further discussion of weak acids and bases. We recognize that weak acids have established an equilibrium in solution and have a Ka value from the law of mass action states uh, whether or not you have a products favored or reactions or reactants favored within the chemical reaction. You also have weak bases that have Kb values. Our lecture will focus on the relationship between Kw, the auto ionization of water, Ka for weak acids, and Kb for weak bases. We start with hydrochloric acid. By now, you recognize that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. When it reacts with H2O, you're going to form the hydronium ion, H3O positive, and the chloride ion. The chloride ion is what we define as the conjugate base, and it is very weak, among the weakest conjugate bases that we know of. Therefore, it can't, it doesn't have a large enough attractive force to attract that hydrogen ion back from the hydronium ion and force this reaction to go in the opposite direction. That does not occur. Therefore, we define hydrochloric acid as a strong acid with a very, very large Ka. That's different than weak acids. Example of a weak acid, hydrofluoric acid. When it reacts with H2O, you form the hydronium ion, H3O positive, and the fluoride ion. Now, this does establish an equilibrium in solution because the fluoride ion is a relatively strong conjugate base. So it can attract that hydrogen ion, that proton, back from the hydronium ion and force the reaction to go in the reverse direction. That establishes an equilibrium in your solution that you can then experimentally determine the law of mass action. The Ka value is going to be a much smaller value and the Ka will have an expression of the hydronium ion times the fluoride ion over hydrofluoric acid. Because the conjugate base is relatively strong, it will react with the water that it surrounds and have a secondary chemical reaction that occurs in that solution as well. Now the fluoride ion is going to act as a base. It's going to be a proton acceptor. So you're going to end up with hydrofluoric acid and hydroxide ions in solution. So up here, it was, the HF was behaving as an acid, and therefore that's why we have a Ka. Now we have the F1 minus behaving as a base, and therefore we have a Kb value. This is also going to be a small value, and our Kb expression is going to be the concentration of HF times the concentration of the hydroxide over the concentration of the F negative. If we were to take these two Ka and Kb expressions and multiply them by one another, we get something very interesting. Let's take these two equations. We have H3O positive times F negative over HF multiplied by the HF and the OH concentration over F negative. We cancel some stuff out here. The F negatives are going to cancel each other out. The HFs are going to cancel each other out. And what we get as a result is H3O positive times OH negative as a result of that combination. That should look very, very familiar to us. If we remember from the auto ionization of water, we have two water molecules that come into contact with one another. One has a slightly greater electronegative attraction to a proton than the other, and we briefly form H3O positive and OH negative for a fraction of a second in a sample of water. 
because this is a liquid and this is a liquid, those are not in our law of mass action, just our two aqueous species. So we end up with H3O positive equals OH negative, and we define that as KW. So we're getting the KW expression out of multiplying a Ka for a weak acid by the Kb, its conjugate base. Therefore, the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. Okay? We can then translate that into Ka and Kb values. If you have a relatively stronger acid, it's going to have a higher Ka value. And its conjugate base, therefore, will have a weaker Kb or a smaller Kb value. And the opposite occurs when you have a KB value that is relatively large, you end up with a corresponding small KA.